we've reported our findings. Now let's see how we can get the employees and the client that we're auditing themselves to help with this process. There's a new initiative, something called Control Self-Assessment, CSA, and you're basically involving the folks that you're auditing or the processes that you're auditing or the departments that you're auditing, you're involving them in the process. And I got to tell you, there are loads of advantages to involving folks and empowering them um, because they'll take ownership and they'll, they'll be able to tell you stuff that they see day in and day out, stuff that you're not going to see, um, but they're there all the time, so they'll see it. So when we talk about control self-assessment, it does maintain internal control security. It utilizes the employees really, it leverages them really well. And it allows employees to report on control functions and potential risks. When you do it, you as the IS auditor, you're there as a facilitator. You're coming in as a lead with your expertise. You're going to take them through the process, basically the same process you went through, but you say, you, you get them to help you determine, okay, what is it you're protecting? Management wants this. Um, what are the risks? What do you see? And you take them through the whole process there with you as the facilitator. And all of this supports the whole control self-assessment, the CSA initiative, and it supports management as well because you've got employee buy-in in the whole thing. Now the tools that you'll use are employee questionnaires, employee surveys and rating sheets, regular management meetings. You'll also have team meetings that you'll facilitate. And you can use that for discovery. It, don't just ask the managers. Ask the people who are actually doing it. Get team meetings going that you facilitate because you'll discover all kinds of things. Facilitate workshops. Now realize that there are some limitations to this. I mean the whole idea is to help transfer the monitoring to the people who are there day in and day out. And there are many benefits like because they're there the risk prevention and the early detection much better than if you were there after the fact or only for a two-week period. Um, the team building becomes very effective. There's improved communication with management um, and uh, also it helps cut down on the cost of monitoring controls and control assessment. The downside is management might think that this is a good substitute for auditing in general. It's not. It's a supplement because you still need that third-party impartial person coming in who is not part of the day-to-day -day operations to be able to see things that everybody else is not noticing. So this is a supplement to it. Another problem is, is that management has to make sure that this is worked into people's tasks as part of their normal job, not just another burden laid on top of them because if it just suddenly comes in out of the blue, they'll view it as extra work. And also, you need to consider the feedback you get from folks. Not all of it is something that is viable or that you can afford. So management has to make it very clear that while all feedback is taken and accepted gladly and gratefully, it may not be practical or, or within the budget or realistic or this or that or the other or within the business objectives to implement every suggestion, even if it's a good suggestion. So management has to set that expectation. But if people feel like they're being heard and if people feel like they're contributing, they will really help a lot. I mean, that does so much to improve employee morale and, and morale of the people working in the department. So these are the benefits and the challenges. And the employees and the managers, they're key. Also, you'll use technology a lot. You'll use it to collect, store, collate, and um, analyze all the data that you collect from your employees and from the participants. Now let's talk about something called continuous auditing. Auditing is something that hopefully is something that is not just done like once every six months. It's something that you're continuously monitoring. If you're a network administrator, or systems administrator, you know what it means to continuously monitor performance of a system or a network. If you are a manager, you know what it means to continuously monitor the performance and the output of your team or your department. Auditing needs to be continuous as well. And so we should have auditing tasks that are performed continuously and 
this allows businesses to just in real time almost see what's going on and not find out about it six months later and now how do we deal with it because it's so long gone and we've lost all this money. So for continuous auditing components, we have this concept called Continuous Data Assurance, CDA, and these are, do we have mechanisms in place to review and verify that we have correct information? Can we tell in real time that information is correct? And then there's continuous control monitoring, so it's data assurance and it's the control monitoring. We know that the data, we can at any moment take a look at the data and feel confident that it's correct and complete and we can look at it in real time. For control monitoring, do we have mechanisms that help us assure that the internal controls are there, doing their job, helping reduce or mitigate the risk of fraud and other threats while meeting regulatory requirements? So we will continuously monitor data and continuously monitor our controls. This gives us continuous assurance. When both of these are working, in place, functioning independently of each other, that we are meeting our overall business objectives. Remember how we talked about different kinds of auditing, and we talked about you can have a financial audit, you can have an operational audit. Very frequently, you'll do that integrated audit. Now, you as an IS person may not be involved necessarily with the financial side, but you might be involved with Yes, the database is good. Yes, the data has integrity. No, nobody tampered with it. Yes, it's remaining confidential. So that the financial audit can be done with an, a level of assurance as well. So the integrated auditing process is, like we said before, we'll identify the risks. What are the controls that are in place? Um, let's take a look at the controls. How are they designed? Let's make sure that they're being supported properly. Let's test them and let's report the results. So when we are supporting the implementation of risk management and control practice, we want to, as the IS auditor, support this and hopefully use the control self-assessment as an ancillary uh, to support our own auditing, our own independent third-party auditing. And we want to have continuous auditing in place as much as possible so that at any given moment, the company can be confident about its operations and its data and uh, what it's producing. So that is lesson one. In lesson two, we're going to talk about something called IT governance.